Hi guys and welcome back for another video here at Ricky's Vape Spot. Today we'll be taking a look at the SDNA 75 by SMY. So as you can see I came back from my vacation and uh, I guess we're back to normal mode again. I actually had quite some time to play with this SDNA 75 mod and what we're gonna do today basically is um, it's going to be a, an, an unboxing and a quick look at it. I'm gonna go through all those functions that the DNA board gives you. I'm not gonna go too much into detail uh, with the eScribe software and that. If you would like me to make a video about the eScribe software, please let me know down in the comment section below or send me an email to rickysvapespot at gmail.com. But today we're gonna go th basically through the basics of this device. It is the first DNA device that I uh, got actually I, I never got to play around with those DNA 200 devices simply because the form factor was too big for me and I actually didn't really like those those big devices but when those 75 watt devices uh, with the evolved chip uh, with DNA 75 chip inside came out I was actually um, pretty excited about some of the mods that um, will be coming out. Also a big thank you goes out to the fine folks at Padlitz HR and Philip for giving me this device for the purposes of this review. I will leave their links in the description box below so you can go and check them out. And you can find this device on their webshop at uh, www.padlitz.hr. So this is the first mod that I got my hands on uh, with the DNA chip inside. So what we're gonna do now, first of all, let's go down and do an unboxing of it. And then later on, I'll just walk you through the menu system. Okay, and we're here up close and personal with the SDNA 75 by SMY. On the box, on the front, we do have a picture of the mod itself, or SDNA 75, Evolve DNA 75 chip, SMY company logo here, uh, Evolve. As DNA. This does come in a starter kit and an express kit. It's the starter kit containing obviously a tank and the express kit uh, containing just the mod itself. As you can see here uh, we have uh, the mod in four different color var variations. We have red, black, uh, stainless steel and a wooden finish. On the back we do have some warnings and some company infos as well as a scratch and check uh, code uh, to check the authenticity of your mod. So when we open it up you're greeted by the mod itself. It comes in this little plastic baggie, a soft plastic bag. So I will leave this mod aside for now. Underneath there is a quality control and I will talk a little bit about quality control for this mod a little bit later not really that happy about it and underneath we do get a USB cable as well as a data cable for you, hooking it up to the computer for your eScribe software and a short SDNA 75 manual on the bottom so let's put this all back inside again and take a look at the mod from top to bottom this is the SDNA 75 on top we do have a stainless steel 510 connection with a spring-loaded center pin. It doesn't have any airflow channels on top, so if you are getting your airflow from the bottom, this might not be the choice for you. On the back, we have the back panel opening up to put your battery inside. Those magnets are okay, not as strong maybe uh, as, as the EVIC VTC. I will make a comparison to that later. And what I realized uh, when I first opened it up is definitely um, the movement of this. I don't know if you can hear it. So it does have a movement. On the bottom we do have battery venting. On the front side there is a USB port, the minus and the plus button. Here is the screen and the button here on top. So another thing that I wanted to talk about uh, when I first got it was actually that from beveling out this uh, 510 connection there was some leftovers, machining leftovers inside and I actually wasn't able to, to screw in my, my tank but I, I just took a, a screwdriver and just cleaned it out and now everything is basically fine again. It is a little bit weird since you know if you're screwing on a original K-Fun you actually don't want those those threads to 
to mess up your um, your tank but yeah I guess what I can suggest is just if you're buying this in store just check if your atomizer can screw on so I will use my EVIC VTC mini as um, as a reference most of you know how big it is so as you can see those are mainly the same sizes uh, of the mods it seems that the uh, SDNA is a little bit taller as you can see from this point and maybe a little bit wider too a little bit wider just by this part and this upper part bulging out here for the weight comparison we have the EVIC VTC Mini this is coming out to 120 grams while the SDNA is coming out to 100 and almost 40 grams as I said before the the battery door on the EV VTC Mini is really actually firm here while this is kind of rattling around but I did play up with some other SDNA devices in store and not all of them had this rattling so with the battery inside installed plus goes down so like so press it in and then just put back uh, the battery door and with the battery installed this comes out to 285 grams in case you've been wondering. Okay, so that's about it for the close-ups and for the unboxing. Uh, let's go back to top, talk a little bit more about it, and then I'll show you the menu system. So that was a short unboxing of the SDNA 75 by SMY. And right now, I actually want to bring you back down to the table again and um, try to show and explain the whole menu system to you guys. I myself, I'm, I was mainly using Joytech chipsets, so the... Um, EVIC VTC Mini and the Vapor Flask Lite uh, by Wise Mac and um, uh, iStick Pico lately. And the menu system is basically the same throughout all those devices with some minor differences. And I actually really do enjoy um, how they set up the whole menu and how you can change your materials and, and your watts and your temperature. Since this was actually the first time I was using an, a DNA 75 board, it was, I had some difficulties on the beginning, at the beginning, mainly because when this device comes to you out of the box, everything will be set to stainless steel and to power. So I, I was actually having problems. I, I really, <laughs> at first I didn't know how to change those materials. Uh, later on I, I figured it out, um, but it's definitely a little bit more tricky than it is with all the other devices uh, that I was using. So actually what I wanted to show you is when you get the device uh, fresh out of the box, what do you have to do, how to set it up and uh, how to basically use it without plugging it into the computer and using the eScribe software. So let's go and take a look. Okay guys, and we're up close with the uh, SDNA device again for the menu system. So once you actually, when you get the device, you will pop in the battery and actually nothing will happen. To turn the device on, you will click the fire button once and then they will say all those messages. So basically when the device arrives to you, it will be set in uh, power mode as well as all the temperature sensing defaults will be set to stainless steel. In order to change your wattage, you will obviously just go up and down. This will go all the way from 1 watt to 75 watts. And actually it can't round robin. So let's go down and up and after a while the accelerator kicks in and it should go actually pretty fast. So I do have a temperature coil installed, actually it's a stainless steel coil. And if you don't hit the fire button, it won't read the ohms. So first thing you have to turn it on with one click and then another click actually will read the resistance of the attached atomizer. So say you don't want to vape this uh, stainless steel coil that you have built in um, power mode, you want to vape it in temperature control. So what do you do? So basically what you need to do is first of all, all the functions on the DNA board come from uh, when you lock the device. So first of all we have to lock uh, the fire button by clicking it three times. And now the fire button is locked as you can see. So now if I actually put my finger on the minus and the plus and press it 
I can actually hold to change temperature. As you can see, the temperature is off right now. By clicking it, it will actually go down. Okay, and it will actually round robin as long as you um, press it on the minus sign, it will round robin. Once you actually press it on plus, it will turn itself off after reaching 600 degrees Fahrenheit. But before we actually put it into temperature control mode, we want to set the different material. And in order to do that, what we need to do, since the device is locked right now, I need to press it like this. So we need to press the minus, the plus, and the fire button at the same time. Hold to change material. So this is power mode in watts. Uh, by clicking it up, we go to stainless steel 3, 304, 316, 316L, 317, nickel 200, tungsten, titanium 1, and back to watts again. This is a stainless steel 316 coil, so I will put this on. And as you can see, see it's still in watts because it's in power mode. Now, I want to change from power mode to temperature mode. So I have it in power mode right now, set to 316 stainless steel and I can still actually adjust the wattage. So if I want to go into a different mode of this mod, I will actually have to lock the power here and by, for doing that I will press the minus and the plus button at the same time. Get it? Power looks hold up and down. So now that I have locked the power of the mod, I will go into the submenu system by clicking the minus button two times. One, two. And now actually I can browse through the different modes. I have since uh, replaced some of the materials here. You can basically uh, go through through all of them. The power mode, we have TC only, TC soft minus, TC soft, TC normal, TC boost, and TC boost plus. And then we're going back to OTC. So OTC is basically how the old DNA boards functions at DNA 40s. Um, Power mode is uh, obviously power mode. TC only is uh, temperature control only. TC soft minus, that is with a very slow ramp up time. Then TC soft is uh, s slow ramp up time. Then we have TC normal, this is no ramp up time. And then we have TC boost with a boost at the beginning. So it will hit a little bit harder and then will come down. And the TC Boost Plus obviously will give you uh, a bigger boost um, than the TC Boost only. Okay, and then we go back to OTC. So all of these settings, those presets, can be used uh, with different types of wires. So for example, let's say you want to go into TC Normal. Okay, this is like a normal temperature control setup with no ramp up time. I will go and select it but right now it's in nickel so in order to change the material I have to first I have to lock it and then I will press the minus the plus and the fire button at the same time hold to change material and now actually uh, whatever I change I will stay in TC normal so titanium watts no stainless steel stainless steel 316 and now I've selected it okay and by pressing it again it will actually read the ohms so now that I've selected the coil actually, uh, what I want to do is basically I want to uh, lock the ohms, I want to lock the resistance. And in order to lock the resistance, we need to lock the device first, and then press the fire and the plus button. Hold to lock ohms. Okay, and that's basically the same way how to unlock them. If you press it again, hold to unlock ohms, it will unlock them. By pressing the fire button and the fire button and the minus button at the same time, you will actually go from normal to stealth mode. Okay, we'll leave it in normal mode right now. So another thing that you would want to do maybe when you're in temperature control mode is basically adjust your wattage. And you can do that by again this is locked and then pressing the minus and the plus button at the same time. And we can change the power. I've already set it to 30 watts, I kind of like it there. So we'll leave it. And to dial that in, you just press the fire button again and it will jump back to temperature control. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, and another thing about the screen. 
after 10 seconds of no use, the screen will actually uh, dim out. Let me just wait for that. Okay. And the fire button continues to light, but that will go off too. And now it's actually just a screen dimmed out. When Once 30 seconds pass, the mod will actually go into sleep mode. But the only thing you have to do is to wake it up is to press the fire button again. And as you can see, I've locked it, so nothing bad will happen. So you cannot really turn the device off. It will automatically go to sleep mode after some time. So let's try and see how this works. Let's vape it. Okay, kind of like my, maybe my temperature a little bit higher. So for example, if you want your temperature higher, just hold and then you can actually adjust the temperature. So let's try 420. So that's better. So, and that's about it basically. So as you can see, the menu system is a little bit different and if you weren't using a DNA board until now, it might take some time to get used to it. But in the end, you can get all the functions that, that you want. One thing that I'm actually missing on this board is the bypass mode. And that's mainly because I like to dry burn my coils in bypass mode, but it's not a big deal for me. The price on this device is actually pretty, pretty good. It goes at Parelitsa HR's website for around 80 euros. Let me just check the price in uh, US dollars. So 80 euros around uh, 88 US dollars, uh, which is actually a really, really good price point for a device having an uh, evolved chipset inside. The finish on it is pretty good. I actually do like the black finish more than I do uh, this one. And I think it comes in two colors. It comes in uh, the black and the silver version. I'm not sure if it comes in a red. I can go and check it out. Yes, it does. This comes in a uh, variation of colors. We have uh, the silver one, there is a red one, there is a black one, and there is something that looks like a wood finish. I will put the picture up on the screen right now. One thing that I do like about this device, first of all, the size, the size comparison, uh, as you saw before, uh, next to the EVIC VTC Mini, it's basically the same size but with a much more comfortable grip uh, to your hands. Second of all, I really, this was my first time with a DNA board. I um, actually used a DNA 40, a DNA 30 board uh, in an old HANA box, uh, but this was actually my first use of a DNA board with temperature control and um, with the eScribe software. So I really, really like how this chip is actually regulating and the temperature and the power it's really accurate uh, and I think you can't go wrong with uh, any of the mods that ha that are having a DNA chip inside also since those DNA chips are getting uh, cheaper I think they they are getting more accessible to a larger group of people if you have a chance just go out and um, try a DNA chip because you will see that it's it does make a difference it really does make a difference on on how a chip is regulating your uh, uh, coil and uh, and the temperature and everything. I think you will. Uh, what I get out of the DNA chip is a much much smoother vape, especially in my temperature control builds. Working with Cantal was awesome as well. I mean, there is not much that can go wrong. But I really do like how this is regulating everything. So this is definitely a big plus. And if you haven't had a chance yet, those devices are really getting cheaper and cheaper. So just go out and get your hands on one and, and just experience the difference by yourself. So the only actually uh, minuses that I could come out with um, this device for me personally is, at least I'm not aware of, it's not having a bypass mode. And I think you cannot switch the screen without the eScrap software, at least I couldn't find any way. If you know a way how to switch it, please let me know down in the comment section below. That would be really useful. Also, yeah, of course, the uh, as mentioned already before, the rattling of the back panel here, of the back door. You can't hear it like this. There's no rattling of any buttons or anything, but when you hold it in your hand, it's, it's kind of moving left and right, so it's not really that nice. If you get a device like this, the only thing that I can suggest to you is maybe open it in the shop uh, beforehand 
and just check out if uh, the door rattles because some of the devices do, some don't. Of course, uh, the 510 threading on the device itself, I got a, I got a pretty bad one as, as mentioned before and uh, I had to uh, wiggle out some leftovers of machining in order to be able to screw on my atomizer. So the, the quality control is eh, so-so. If you want to go and, and play with a DNA 75 board, I think this will this is probably the, the best option you can go with. So I, I think I did cover all those main things about the SDNA 75. Once again, a big thank you to Padlitz HR for sending this my way for the purposes of this review. The links will be down in the description box below so you can go and check this mod out on their website. And I think that that's about it. I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible just to, to give you as much information. If you did like it, please um, leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Also, I do have a Facebook, Twitter and, and uh, Instagram account, so you can follow me there. The links will be in the description box as well. And that's about it for me for today. And thank you so much for watching. I'm wishing you all a wonderful rest of the day. Let's keep on vaping and I'll see you again pretty soon. Thank you.